Kia or Duchess. Meghan rubs noses with dignitaries in the traditional Maori greeting as royal couple touched down in New Zealand. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were treated to a very warm welcome during their first day in New Zealand on Sunday. After the Invictus athletes they travelled with disembarked, Prince Harry and Meghan stepped off the plane and were greeted by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Wellington Mayor Justin Lester. Prince Harry was given a box by the Invictus delegation, and Ems Ardern apologized for the strong Wellington winds, News Hub reported. The couple were quickly whisked away in a silver Mercedes bearing the number plate Royal One, and taken to nearby Government House for a traditional welcome which included dances speeches and a very intimate greeting. But an official reception was disrupted by a fire alarm following the public walkabout. Meghan addressed crowds at Government House to celebrate the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage, delivering a speech in front of a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. During her stirring speech, Meghan told guests at Government House, women's suffrage is about feminism, but feminism is about fairness. Suffrage is not simply about the right to vote but also about what that represents. The basic and fundamental human right of being able to participate in the choices for your future. Maori warriors in traditional dress were in attendance when the couple landed and a pauiri was performed for the visiting royals. A pauiri is a Maori welcoming ceremony involving speeches, dancing, singing and finally the hongi, where one person presses their nose and forehead against another. Harry and Meghan will watch a haka performed by members of New Zealand's armed forces, a group the prince has performed the traditional dance with before. The couple will then attend the Pukiu National War Memorial to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Still at Government House, the Duke and Duchess met the Governor-General and watched a haka performed by a group from Hadopaaro, a fielding Maori boys' boarding school. A military demonstration was performed and the couple spoke with children from the schools that had attended the ceremony, as well as those in Girl Guide and Boy Scout groups. The Duchess of Sussex decided against a designer outfit for the day, wearing a black maternity dress from Asus instead, but she did team it with a trench coat from New Zealand designer Karen Walker. Upon arriving at the war memorial, the couple each laid a single fern on the tomb, before together laying a full wreath and entering the memorial building. Inside. Prince Harry was presented with the badge and gold for his work helping injured veterans. Wife Meghan attached the pin to his jacket, above his military medals. Their visit to the memorial will be one of the only opportunities for the public to cite the Duke and Duchess on Sunday, and more than 5,000 people are reported to be in attendance. Among them, a small group of protesters are holding the Tino Rangatara Tanga flag, which symbolizes Maori sovereignty and banners reading NZ troops out of Afghanistan. Stop the Vare. One young boy with red hair, wearing a blue bow tie, was seen holding a sign that said Hi Harry, I'm Harry, while a group of girls held a sign saying We love you Megan. Harry's alright too. Two ten-year-olds who waited hours for a glimpse of the couple got more than they bargained for when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex agreed to pose for a picture. Sophie Hubbard and Hope Watson were among the hundreds of well-wishers who packed the grounds of the National War Memorial in Wellington the first stop for the royal couple in New Zealand. The mother and father-to-be arrived in the country from the Sydney for the final stretch of their marathon 16-day tour which has also seen them visit Fiji and Tonga. Jan Richardson opting for a direct approach when asking for a picture with the pair, telling reporters, I decided to be quite blunt and asked three times, can I get a photo, can I get a photo? Harry said, yeah. Sure. Megan started to talk to them and I thought I'm just going to ask. We've been here since 8 o'clock. There was a contemplation about staying overnight for the fun of it. The couple were given gifts including a Buzzy Bee, a popular toy from New Zealand, which Harry held in celebration after it was passed down through the rows of crowds. Pictures of Harry's brother, the Duke of Cambridge, playing with the toy during the visit of the Prince of Wales and Diana in 1983 made front pages around the world. Another royal fan with a gift was Alexandra McKay, 10, who handed the Duchess a homemade red rose brooch with gold accent which she immediately attached to her Karen Walker trench coat. Alexandra, who wants to be a fashion designer when she grows up, presented the princess with a brooch. I said, it's really nice to meet you and then we gave her the brooch, she said. She said. Wow, how did you make it? How long did it take? I want to be a fashion designer when I grow up, 
This is a good start. The cheers and screams from the walkabout were a sharp contrast to the somber moments previously as the Sussexes paid their respects at the war memorial. The couple's arrival into the public area sent the crowd into meltdown, with tears shed, screams heard and presents given. Megan spoke with several women, including one who told News Hub she'd flown all the way from California to meet her, and had been able to speak with her about being biracial. The Duchess was gifted flowers, a teddy bear, what appeared to be a bag of lollies, and a red flower which she pinned to her jacket, underneath her Anzac poppy. Harry and Meghan will spend their evening at an official dinner, before kicking off Monday with breakfast at a cafe and then heading to the Ewell Tasman National Park.